Hello and welcome to the video. In this video guide we will show you how to deploy Burp Suite Enterprise Edition on Kubernetes. You can deploy Burp Suite Enterprise Edition to any x86 based cluster that meets the prerequisites for installation. For information on what we are able to support you with when installing Burp Suite Enterprise Edition on Kubernetes, please see our support scope for Kubernetes deployments page. If you are moving an existing installation to a Kubernetes deployment, it is important to note that each Burp Suite Enterprise Edition license corresponds to a single running instance of Burp Suite Enterprise Edition. Therefore, you will need to migrate or decommission your existing setup in order to reuse an existing Burp Suite Enterprise Edition license with a Kubernetes deployment. Deploying from scratch. In this section of the video, we'll explain how to deploy Burp Suite Enterprise Edition to Kubernetes as a fresh installation. There are four main steps to deploy Burp Suite Enterprise Edition to Kubernetes from scratch, that is, without migrating any data from an existing deployment. Step one, set up your Kubernetes cluster. Step two, install the application. Step three, configure the application. And step four, activate your license. In this video, we'll run through step one and step two, running through the prerequisites and set up your cluster, along with how to install the application using the Helm chart. You will then be ready to move on to step three, configure the application. Step one, set up your Kubernetes cluster. Before deploying Burp Suite Enterprise Edition using the Helm chart, you will first need an x86 based cluster that meets the following requirements. An ingress solution, for example, a load balancer or ingress controller. In this example, we have an AWS load balancer a persistent volume and a persistent volume claim. The persistent volume should be simultaneously accessible to all nodes available to the namespace. The persistent volume claim should be created in the same namespace as you plan on deploying the application. Optionally, you may wish to take advantage of auto-scaling, which will allow the cluster nodes to be scaled based on your scanning demand. The cluster auto-scaler must be installed and enabled in this case. As well as these Kubernetes requirements, please note that you will also need a suitable external database. Please see our database requirements documentation for more details. For customers that don't yet have a suitable cluster setup, we have an AWS reference template available on a public GitHub repo. This reference template is intended as an example way of working. Therefore, you may wish to fork it to your own repository and customize it to suit your own needs. The reference template includes all of the prerequisites mentioned previously, including auto-scaling. It provisions a Postgres database as well for convenience. We have used our AWS reference template to deploy and set up our cluster ready for deploying Burp Suite Enterprise Edition in the next section of this video. Please note that while we offer full support for Kubernetes deployments of Burp Suite Enterprise Edition, we are unable to offer support to your underlying Kubernetes infrastructure. This includes using and customizing any of our reference templates. You can find more information on the support scope for Kubernetes deployments page in our documentation. Step two, install the application. Burp Suite Enterprise Edition uses Helm to manage installation and configuration. In order to install the application, you first need to download the Helm chart from our releases page. Once you have selected the version of Burp Suite Enterprise Edition that you wish to install, you will need to select Kubernetes from the drop-down list and click Download. This will download a zip file containing the Helm chart. Once the chart is downloaded, unpack it into a directory of your choice. Note that you will need the name of this directory when running commands against the chart. Within the Helm chart, you will find a file called values.yaml. This file contains the default values that will be passed to the Helm chart when you install it. You can customize these values to suit your needs. Please contact our support team if you need any additional guidance. If you wish to use an Oracle database, you will need to manually enable Oracle support by modifying the values file. To do this, simply change support Oracle to true. Please note that while it is possible to fully customize the Helm chart, we are unable to offer support in this process beyond customizing the values file. For more information on this, please see the support scope for Kubernetes deployments page. 
Before you install Burp Suite Enterprise Edition using the Helm chart, make sure that you know or have created the namespace that you want to use for the deployment and that your persistent volume claim is in this namespace. We are going to use the namespace BSEE in this example. To install the application, we're going to use the Helm command. We're going to use minus n to specify the namespace we wish to deploy to. So in our case, that's going to be BSEE, followed by the name for the deployment. I'm going to use BSEE-deployment, followed by the path and name of the Helm chart. So this is the directory that we unzipped the chart to earlier. Here you can see the installation is complete. As I have used an AWS reference template, I have an address for my AWS load balancer. If you do not have an address here, once the installation is complete, you will need to extract your Burp Suite Enterprise Edition external IP address in order to access the application. To do so, you will need to run kubectl get services minus n and then your namespace. This command details all of the services in the namespace, including their external IP addresses. Ultimately, the address you use to connect to Burp Suite Enterprise Edition will depend on the ingress solution you have chosen to use. If you are using an alternative ingress solution, you can point it at the service for the web server. In my case, as I am using the AWS load balancer, I'm going to use the web server service and extract the external IP address. I can then use this address to connect to the Burp Suite Enterprise web console. You may have previously had a Kubernetes deployment of Burp Suite Enterprise Edition with a customized values file. If so, you need to use the same values file with your new installation. To specify the values file, add the minus f values file argument to the install command. For example, helm install minus n, our namespace, our deployment name, our helm chart, minus f, and our values file. Now that the installation is complete, you are ready to configure the application. You may need to wait a few minutes for the pods and services to start before connecting to the web console for the first time. Seeing a restart on the web server pod is perfectly normal after installation. As there are potential security implications to leaving the application in an unconfigured state, we recommend completing the rest of the configuration as soon as possible. We hope you have found this video useful. If you have any questions, please reach out to our support team.